as we'll see from Billy Yates who joins us live in the studio. Uh, Billy performed at the prestigious Grand Ole Opry over 20 times. So we've met a lot of people who've been there. I don't think I've met too many performers recently who've actually performed there. What's it like? You know, it's amazing because, uh, you know, this was, it all started, I was on, on major record labels, you know, in the past and that kind of thing. And now that I'm doing my own independent thing, I still continue to get to do the Opry every now and then. And, you know, it's just such a sacred stage for me because I remember, I'll never forget the first time I walked out there and, uh, yeah, I stood on that circle because if they took the the floor from the old Ryman Auditorium, the original Grand Ole Opry, you know, venue, and they they put that in the the, the new Opry House, and I and I and I, I told the audience, I said, you all have to give me just a minute. I really have to savor this moment, and it really it well it it was such a special thing to me because I had I mean as I mentioned earlier had had driven around town as a kid trying to tune in the Grand Ole Opry, and uh, it you know it's just a special thing, and and uh, and so every time I do it, I I treat it like it's the last time I'll ever get to do it. And uh, because you never know, but but at the same time, it's like man, that's just a, just a, a, such an honor, you know, to get to be uh, someone that they call to do the Opry. When a lot of times it's when somebody doesn't show up, or you know, I'm just kind of on standby, and so it's really nice. Billy, we saw recently. There's been lots of biopics, Johnny Cash and Loretta Lynn, and the coal miner's daughter. And the Loretta Lynn movie featured quite prominently in that, as she was standing on side stage to come on. Is that still the way it is, where people are just queuing up side stage to come on and do it their is. thing? I mean, uh, especially you know, one time uh, uh, a few years ago, you know, they, they do the the Grand Ole Opry at the Ryman Auditorium, which is the the mother church of country music, as they call it, and it was the original, you know, home of the Grand Ole Opry. And there's not really a backstage area. You just stand in the wings. And I'll never forget, I was standing there and uh, getting ready to go out. And my, my little boy, who was just a baby then, uh, was in his car seat. And I'm holding the car seat and we're watching the, the Opry. And I saw, it was like, you know, Jim and Jesse and like all these, all these old, you know, Opry icons were coming out. Little Jimmy Dickens in the rhinestone suits and everything. And it was just chilling to stand there and see that and to know that I was coming up next to go out and perform. And, uh, uh, it's just something that I, I, I really uh, respect and, and uh, just I can't, words can't even, even explain how I feel about the opera. Now Billy Yates is with us. He's going to be with us up till about 8 o'clock, so it's a special chat with Billy Yates. After that, you're going to hear from Elkie Brooks, so if you are caught in traffic, you found the station for you tonight. Lots of nostalgia, lots of country music, and lots of um, information from Elkie Brooks on the second part of tonight's show. But first of all, we're back to Billy again. And I did mention that he has written and worked with um, the one and only uh, George Jones. He's also toured as a support act for Alan Jackson, so lots to talk about the stars he's worked with. But let's get on to George Jones, uh, the legend. Let's start by just talking about the song Choices. When we come back after the song and the break, we'll talk a little bit more about him. How did you come to write this song Choices? And you know, when did you give it to Jones? Wrote the song in 94, I believe it was. And uh, and every time George does a new record, he always calls and says, hey, I'm working on a new album and, and can you bring me some songs? And, and so I go out to his house and I play him some songs. And the truth is on this song, we've laughed about it now, you know, since, but uh, I played him the song the first time and he listened and he said, no, nah, Billy, I don't think this song is for me. And so another year and a half or so goes by, I play it for him again and same thing. He didn't remember hearing it, which was kind of funny, but he said, no, nah, I don't think so. Not, not, uh, that song's not for me. And then about another year and a half or so goes by and it's the year 2000, I think it was. And uh, somebody from the record label played him the song and, and they told me, they said, George said, uh, well, I wonder why Billy never played me this song. So he never remembered it, you know. But but it's, but the song I think finally sort of hit home, and it became something that was special to him. 